Hello everyone. I hope that you're doing amazing wherever you are in the world. My name is Boom Shaka and I welcome you to my channel. As always, I'm really grateful that all of you are here supporting me in this way and you know, listening, watching, commenting. I really appreciate it. And recently, um, a younger male INFJ messaged me on Instagram asking a question about relationships. And, you know, I'm not, I should say, I should kind of, you know, remark that I'm not an expert on relationships, particularly for INFJs, because I haven't been in that many of them. But I have talked to a lot of people who've been in relationships with INFJs. And um, so I'll, I'll be giving you feedback on the question based on my experience with it, which is very minuscule, and then my conversations about it, which are many. And so hopefully it helps you. And if it doesn't, then of course, you know, you're gonna have to find some other way of answering your questions. Uh, but particularly I wanted to answer this particular question because it's, it's something that I've dealt with. I've dealt with a lot of it and it always irks me whenever I get into a relationship. And I know that it can be very helpful to all the INFJs out there. So the question was particularly about how, if you get into a relationship as an INFJ, you kind of bring your obsessive personality into the relationship as well. So, you know, before the relationship, you're kind of working away at your projects, you're focused on your projects, you're doing your things, you're kind of balanced enough, you know, you're kind of eating well, drinking enough water, blah, blah, blah. So you're able to kind of maintain your balance. But as soon as you get into a relationship, as soon as you fall in love and you're, you know, in, uh, attracted to this particular person, somehow, Everything else just falls by the wayside and you're not able to focus on anything else except the relationship anymore. You get obsessed with the relationship, you keep on thinking about the person, about you know how to improve the relationship, how to make them happy, um, that if they are happy, if they're upset with you for some reason, you know, you kind of get a little bit into that overthinking madness and that results in you ignoring all your work, which causes you to you know fall behind and you're procrastinating on important things it causes a lot of things that are important in your life to fall apart um, in a minor or, or major way. And I've experienced both ends of the spectrum. And you kind of are wondering, you know, how can I get back to balance? How can I still maintain this relationship, not just completely give up on it? Because that's what the solution a lot of INFJs kind of turn to is like, oh, well, you know, this is not working out. I'm getting too obsessed with this person. I can't deal with them anymore. I think I should just just completely throw it out, you know, and just focus on my work. And I've done that a lot myself where, you know, I'm like, oh, I can't, I can't balance my relationship with my work. And my work is really important to me. So I would just think, okay, you know what? Relationships are not that important. Uh, I don't think I want to be in one. I'm sure this person going to find someone else. I'll find someone else perhaps in the future, but not right now. And right now I need to be single and focus on work. And so that's what a lot of NFGs end up doing is because we can't find that balance between being in a relationship and still focusing on our projects and working on the things that are important to us. And I'm not saying that I have the ultimate solution to this because I think it is something that is going to be particular or specific to each person. You know, you're going to find your own way of finding balance in the relationship. But, you know, some of the things that have helped me in the past because I've had some relationships that had balance, not all of them. Um, but as I get older, I do find that it does get easier to balance. Um, and if you don't want to wait to be older to get easier in balancing relationships, one of the things I would say is to have designated, designated periods of times where you sit and think about the relationship, like obsess about the relationship. And this is something that's helped me a lot because we're just obsessive in general. And what happens when we get obsessed about something is that we kind of obsess all day long about it. Right? We're just sitting there while we're working, we're obsessing about it. We're, we're sitting there eating and we're obsessing about it. I know I just had this thing a couple of days ago where I was obsessed with this particular project that I'm working on and all day long, you know, I kind of missed exits when I was driving my motorbike and I got lost even though I was going to a place that I've gone to a billion times before because I was so in my head thinking about this project. What am I going to do? How am I going to do it? And I forgot about the real world, right? And so I had to really stop myself the second time I got lost. I'm like, okay, stop it now. Okay, stop thinking about it. You can set some time aside and think about it later. But right now, focus on what's going on in the world right now. 
Now, I have practice with this, so I could do that and I could say, okay, cool, I'm not going to think about it anymore. I'll set up some time and think about it later. I think what happens with us is that we kind of get anxious because once we do fall in love, it's very rare for us to fall in love and to be with someone in a relationship. So once we do, we got kind of get a little bit anxious about it and we also want to be perfect in the relationship. You know, we have this perfectionistic streak to us. Um, and so even if you don't have trust issues, even if you're not worried about the relationship, you still want to make sure that it works out well. And that causes you to feel like you need to think about it. And we feel, we think, as an, as an INFJ, we think that if we think a lot, you know, that we can solve all these feeling problems, that these relationships will work better if we think a lot about it. But obviously overthinking never helps the situation. It's just not going to create a better solution because you're just going to end up overthinking and perhaps even create um, a problem where it doesn't actually exist. And that's the main thing that I would end up doing is I would sit there and I would overthink and overthink and, and then I would start creating problems about the relationship. Oh, oh, he doesn't like this when I do this, when he's never said anything about it and I'm creating problems and you know ruining the, rela ruining the relationship when it could have just gone off smoothly if I just stopped obsessing about it. So now what I do is that I kind of set up a time to obsess about things and you kind of say, okay, from three to five today or whatever your timing is or three to four, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to obsess about this particular thing. And what I usually do when I'm obsessing about it in that time period is that I'll write down all the things that are worrying me. I'll write down all the important things that I need to think about, which are going to solve the situation that I'm in or all the things that are bothering me, all the things that I think are going to fall apart in the future that I think I should fix right now. You know, everything, just kind of put it down on paper if that works for you or do a voice note if that works for you instead. You know, just get it out of your system. It's basically, instead of kind of congealing inside of you and going over and over and over again, why don't you just put it down on paper or get it out of you, out of, out of yourself, out of your head and into something that is more easy to see. Because as soon as you write some stuff down, especially stuff that's worrying you, you'll see, oh, it's not actually as bad as I imagined it to be. Or all those obsessive thoughts, once they're on paper, they're not inside of you anymore, it'll be easier for you to get over them. Now, you might require several iterations of this to get over those obsessive thoughts. So you're not going to just do it once and then be done with it. You might have to do it four, five, six, maybe lots of different times because as time goes on, your obsessive thoughts will also change. You know, I mean, you might be obsessed about this particular item right now, but then you might get obsessed about some other relationship item later. And then a little bit later, you're obsessed about this other relationship item. So you have to constantly be taking all this sludge, all of these obsessivenesses out of you, right? And onto paper. So that helps me a lot when I'm in such relationships. Another thing I would say is that, you know, what INFJs tend to do, and this is something that is a problem of ours, is that we tend to went and obsess and, uh, not went, obsess and overthink on our own in this bubble of ours. And that causes issues because we're kind of making up stories in our heads that are not real. And so a lot of times what I would do is I would, and I'm trying very much to do that now, is I would actually open up to the person send them a voice note or even maybe call them or meet up face to face if that's possible and obsess about the items that talk about the obsessed items that I'm t talking about or thinking about in my head constantly with the person, you know, kind of putting it out there in front of them so that they can tell me how ridiculous I'm being. And then, you know, it'll make me feel better about the whole situation and help me obsess less. Right. Um, now, maybe you're not at that stage yet, maybe you're not comfortable doing that, maybe you're afraid that the person's going to think you're crazy and leave you. They're not going to do that, but you know, I've done I've said a lot of obsessive mad things to people that I've been in relationships with and they've still stuck around. Um, so, it's not going to happen, but if you are worried about it, then perhaps vent to a person who's not in the relationship with you. So, you know, not to their partner, but to a person who you trust who can listen to you without um, judging you and um, if you don't have someone like that, then again, you have to go back to a journal or a voice note or, you know, kind of doing that kind of stuff. Hopefully you do have someone like this, though, at least one person in your life that you can go to and say, these are all the crazy thoughts in my head. I'm going to tell you all about them. I don't need any answers. I don't want you to tell me, uh, give me advice or anything. I just want to get it out of my system because that's what you're doing is you're just getting it out of your system. 
Otherwise, what happens, as I said, it just loops around in your head over and over and over again and just causes you to go insane. Also, it takes up so much brain power, that like so much computing power that you have in your brain, that you don't have anything left over for your work or your project or anything else. And that's what the whole problem of the situation is, that you're kind of wasting away all this powerful brain you have on useless overthinking problems that don't exist, right? Um, I'd rather you put that effort into solving the world's problems because, <laughs> you know, if INFJs stopped overthinking over useless things and started overthinking on things that matter, I bet you we could just completely change the paradigm of this world, right? So those are the two solutions I would offer to you. I know they're very abstract solutions and not something that you can just put down on paper and say, this is, I've done it, okay, check off this list. Um, but I think abstract problems require abstract solutions. And so hopefully this works for you. Again, let me know, try it out, see if it works for you. If it doesn't, you know, then I'm sorry, I couldn't help you. If it does, let me know as well. I'd really love to know that. And also if there are some older INFJs or INFJs in general in the group that have other solutions for this obsessiveness in a relationship, then let us know. And so we can all benefit from your knowledge. Um, yeah, I think that's all that I wanted to say on this subject. Again, thank you so much for being on my channel. And I shall see you the next time around. Bye.